Hello, everyone, I'm Nogami from the National Institute for Environmental Studies. Recently, the microplastics problem has become a major topic. What kind of studies are being conducted at the National Institute for Environmental Studies? I'm Tanaka from the National Institute for Environmental Studies. Recently, the microplastics problem is attracting considerable attention, and researchers around the world are conducting active studies. Today, I would like to introduce our study cases on microplastics. Yes, please. To start with, what is the definition of microplastics? I know it means small plastics, but I cannot tell exactly what they are. Generally, plastic particles of 5 mm or smaller are called microplastics. When particles smaller than 5 mm are compared side by side, they look like this. There are various sizes of microplastics, including those around 1 mm like daphnia and those around 1 micrometer like a bacterium. In particular, plastics smaller than 1 micrometer are called nanoplastics. So, their name changes when their size becomes smaller. Are there any features? Yes, when plastics become very small particles like nanoplastics, problems different from microplastics occur. I will explain this later in detail. There are also other classifications of microplastics. Plastics designed and produced to be small as industrial products are called primary microplastics, and small plastics resulted from the fragmentation of large plastics are called secondary microplastics. For example, it is said that some face washes and toothpastes contain primary microplastics. Then, are face washes and toothpastes bad for our health? Microplastics themselves are not highly toxic. Basically, even if we eat them, they will be discharged through the digestive tract. The problem is that these microplastics are being accumulated in the environment such as rivers and the sea. It is pointed out that there are possibilities that living creatures eat a lot of microplastics and absorb harmful chemicals in microplastics or develop difficulties absorbing nutrition. You have said the amount of discharged microplastics is increasing. How much is that actually? In some regions, it is said that there are more than 100,000 microplastic particles per square kilometer. The amount of discharged plastic wastes is said to be large especially in Asian countries. However, accurate amounts of discharges have not yet been clarified. In order to clarify the discharged amount of microplastics in Japan, the National Institute for Environmental Studies is conducting studies on microplastics in rivers in collaboration with local environment laboratories all over the country. In order to analyze microplastics, a pretreatment to clean microplastics is necessary. I will explain this step by step. First, a plankton net of 300 micrometer mesh is set in a river, and 10 cubic meters of river water is passed through the net, this allows microplastics larger than 300 micrometers to be collected. Since impurities are attached to the collected microplastics, in the next step, they are decomposed by hydrogen peroxide solution and iron sulfate. In the end, sand and stones are removed by density separation using sodium iodide, and the microplastics are collected. This is the end of the pretreatment process. All impurities are removed from the microplastics. Next, the number and size of the microplastics are measured. They are very small. And there are so many. How do you count them? We count them by picking them up with tweezers, but the size measurement is problematic. Since it is too hard to measure sizes using rulers, we use laser microscopes. By using laser microscopes, we can accurately measure the shape of a large number of microplastics at one time. It is possible to measure sizes down to about 10 micrometers. The shapes of microplastics are irregular such as square or slightly rounded. Many microplastics generated by weathering and fragmentation have irregular shapes. On the other hand, many microplastics from clothes and carpets have long and thin fibrous shapes. Thanks to laser microscopes, we now know the shapes of microplastics, but this is not enough. Also we need to clarify the type of plastics. For example, this is a container from a 100 yen shop. Nogami-san, can you tell what type of plastic this is? Is PP written here indicating the type? 
That's right, PP is an abbreviation for polypropylene, it is relatively strong against heat and is tough. It is also cheap and used for various materials. But polypropylene is very weak to ultraviolet light, therefore, if it is exposed to sunlight for a long time, it deteriorates and generates microplastics. On the other hand, there are plastics that have resistance to ultraviolet light compared to polypropylene, so even if the plastic size is the same, the speed of deterioration varies with the type of plastics. I see. That is why we need to clarify the type of plastics. In order to clarify the plastic type, we use an infrared spectrophotometer. By setting microplastics in the device, we can ascertain the plastic type quickly. This is the result of analysis. Can you tell the plastic type from this bumpy shape of line? Yes. This line is called the spectrum, and the shape of the spectrum varies by plastic type. When we compare the microplastic spectrum obtained here with the spectra of various plastics measured in advance, the spectrum matches that of low-density polyethylene. By this method, we can conclude that this microplastic is low-density polyethylene. This is the end of the explanation on microplastics analysis. It was quite complicated. But the analytic method I have just explained has a weak point. This method cannot be applied to nanoplastics, which are smaller plastics. Nanoplastics were mentioned in the explanation earlier. They are plastics smaller than one micrometer. Yes, microplastics are known to be fragmented into small pieces by deterioration and become nanoplastics, it is considered that when they become nanoplastics, their adverse effects on living creatures become even stronger. Is there a possibility that nanoplastics are more likely to be taken into the body because they are smaller? Absolutely. Microplastics are easier to be discharged from the body because of their size, while nanoplastics are absorbed into cells. They are increasingly considered to have more adverse effects on living creatures than microplastics. That is very serious, but come to think of it, we don't see such topics on TV very much. Actually, nanoplastics are not studied very well in the world. This is because there is no standard, which is necessary for analysis. Unlike microplastics, nanoplastics are too small for their size and shape to be examined one by one. Instead, they are analyzed by weighing, but the standard of weight has not been established in the current technologies. It is like there being no balance weight for a balance scale. When you weigh an object with a balance scale, you cannot tell what grams the object is unless you compare the weight with balance weights. Therefore, we are conducting studies to make balance weights, which are called standard materials. These are nanoplastic particles I made aiming at the standard material in the future. I won't explain how to make them here, but I have succeeded to make nanoparticles with six kinds of plastic. They have a beautiful spherical shape. Will nanoplastic analysis become possible with these? Still, there are issues such as a large-scale production method for particles, but I think eventually they will make a large contribution to nanoplastics analysis. Detailed results have been published as research papers, so I would be happy if you took a look at them too. They are freshly obtained research results. So, they are the latest research results, I believe that more new results are coming in the future, I'm looking forward to seeing them, thank you very much for your time today. If you want to know about a wide range of waste problems, please see the online magazine CanCan -Can from the detailed section.